Greetings, Word Horde. We're here with an exciting option for you, a version of our podcast without any ads. That's right. No advertising interruptions, just the content you love, ready to go in your favorite podcast apps like Spotify and Apple Podcasts. It's another way to support the show, ensuring that we keep bringing you the word stories and language explorations that you love. Try it at waywardradio.org slash ad free. And it's affordable. For just a small subscription fee, you can enjoy a way with words uninterrupted, except by us. Plus, it makes a great gift. Know somebody who loves language as much as you do? Give them the gift of words. Easy to sign up, easy to enjoy. It's the same away with words, just streamlined for your listening pleasure. Go to waywardradio.org slash adfree. Support us, support the show, and enjoy an ad-free listening experience. waywardradio.org slash adfree. Thank you. Support for Away With Words comes from Mosey Online Backup. Mosey protects your valuable computer files against data loss from hard drive crashes, viruses, theft, and other disasters. Find out more at mozy.com. Welcome to another minicast from Away With Words. I'm Martha Barnett. Did you know that a falcon's eyeballs are so huge they take up most of its head? And that those eyes are separated by only a thin membrane? Well, that's just one of the fun facts I learned this week from a new book called Falconer on the Edge, A Man, His Birds, and the Vanishing Landscape of the American West. The author, Rachel Dickinson, is married to a falconer, and her book is a glimpse into the world of this centuries-old blood sport. Now, I'll admit it, the blood part makes me queasy, but I have to say that the book gave me a whole new appreciation for the vocabulary of falconry. Like, take the word haggard. It describes a worn, tired, gaunt appearance. But did you know that originally haggard applied to birds? Specifically, it described an adult female hawk that was caught in the wild and not raised in captivity. By the 16th century, haggard had come to denote anybody who was similarly wild or intractable, and later it applied more generally the way we use it today. And, you know, in Shakespeare's day, falconry was an aristocratic sport, and he's very familiar with this. You see it in his plays, like, for example, the jealous Othello. He frets that Desdemona may prove to be haggard, that is, wild and out of his control. Or in Macbeth, the character Macduff is aghast when he realizes that his family has been murdered in one fell swoop. Now, the image here in one fell swoop is of a falcon swooping down from the sky and striking with swift ferocity. The fell in that phrase is an adjective. It means inhumanly cruel. And this type of fell in one fell swoop is a linguistic relative of our word felon. Then there's the term pride of place. Today, this expression means the highest or most important location. For example, you might say high-definition TVs enjoy pride of place in many living rooms today. But originally, pride of place meant the airy height from which a falcon swoops. And you see this phrase again in Macbeth when Shakespeare uses it to suggest that unnatural, ominous things are happening. He writes, A falcon towering in her pride of place was by a mousing owl hawked at and killed. Anyway, if you want to take a closer look at the odd and bloody subculture of falconry today, check out Dickinson's book. It'll give you a whole new sense of birds and words. The book again is Falconer on the Edge, A Man, His Birds, and the Vanishing Landscape of the American West. That's all for this week. And as always, we'd love to hear from you. You can write to us at words at waywardradio.org or stop by our discussion forum. You'll find that at waywardradio.org slash discussion. For Away With Words, I'm Martha Barnett. You can support this program by making a donation at waywardradio.org slash donate. Thank you.